वेलकम एवरी वन टू दिस लेक्चर ऑन द टॉपिक ऑफ फिक्शन सो टूडे विल बी स्टार्टिंग दिस टॉपिक दिस टॉपिक कम्स अंडर द चैप्टर लॉज ऑफ मोशन दिस इज अ वेरी नाइस एंड एंटरटेनिंग टॉपिक एज इट इज रिलेटेड टू आर डे टू डे लाइफ विच इज फिक्शन सो इन जनरल मोशन uh whenever some body is moving we usually uh, encountered the word or encountered the phrase that some friction force is acting on that body when that when some body uh, when some body or some block is moving for example uh let us take a case of a bag uh let's say we go to a shop and we want to uh, purchase flour uh or uh, rice let's say a bag of rice and we want to purchase in some large large quantity let's say a 10 kg bag or 15 kg bag we want to purchase so uh, as we are uh, looking at the bag of the rice which we have to push and pull or take to our home uh, after we have purchased it uh, it comes to our mind that it would be pretty difficult to move it right and we say that some force of friction has to be overcome in uh, order to even get it moving you want to just uh, move the rice back with a small amount it would require a huge amount of force to get it moving and automatically uh, a calculation starts happening in our mind that okay, how much force would be required uh, whether we would be able to lift it or not so uh, this is what this chapter is about that uh, when we are going to push that back and then uh, what surface is exerting the force of friction or what force is being exerted on the back which is preventing its motion so we say that that is the uh, friction force and when the back has not start moved at all uh, then we say that the force exerted by the floor on that rice bag is called static friction and once that bag of rice has started moving on the floor we have overcome that force of friction even then the friction won't uh, stop acting on it it would act but when there is a uh, relative motion between the contact surfaces of the rice bag and the floor then we say that the force of friction is then named kinetic friction so these are the two types of friction that is static friction and the kinetic friction so um, what are what is the definition of friction you would say so by definition we say that the force between two solid surfaces in contact uh, which we consider right the rice bag and the floor we can take even more uh, case like uh, there is a tire and instead of the tire being vertical on the surface uh, it is lying on the surface it is lying flat on the surface it is uh, lying such that its axis is vertical and the tire is horizontal so we have to pull the tire in that way of course that's not a very good way to pull the tire but we say that uh, okay we are pushing in that way only so even in that case uh, there is a contact surface a contact between the surface of the tire that is the contact between solid surfaces and the surface of ground whenever there is a relative sliding or tendency for relative sliding and is parallel to the common tangent at point of contact is called friction so that is what we call is force of friction um or frictional force uh next what are the properties which we associate with friction so the first property which we associate with friction is that uh when let's say a block is kept on a surface and the surface is rough on some rough surface we have kept the block then we say that the force of friction which would be applied on that block let's say i represent the force of friction by this direction let us say the block is moving with to some rightward direction so the force of friction would act uh, to uh, in opposite direction to the motion of the block uh, and this is the force of friction 
so this force has been experimentally observed to be proportional to the normal force acting on the block so that is the first property of frictional force the second property is friction force is independent of the macroscopic area of contact that means that let's say you have a book which is kept on the floor then let's say i have to apply some p force to get it moving and now instead of uh, the book book lying on its cover on the surface now the book is kind of standing on the surface of the floor and the floor uh, the friction between the floor uh, and the uh, roughness of the floor has not changed the roughness of the floor is same so uh, in this case also we would be applying the force p to get the book moving so by changing the orientation of the book or by changing the area of contact that is the macroscopic area of contact on the book the force of friction does not change as you can see the macroscopic area of contact in this case is much higher than this case so you say that uh, the force of friction uh, does not change it does not matter it depend upon the area of contact next we have static friction so uh, let us study static friction with by starting with an example so let's say we have a block that block is kept on the floor again we will be considering the same example for the sake of simplicity and one thing which i want to mention is that uh, whenever we are drawing force of friction we will draw the force of friction on the block uh, just at the bottom just above the bottom like this so what this ensures is that that it is clear that on which surface or on which body the force of friction is acting that is the force of friction is acting on the block and obviously we know that uh, that Newton's third law is followed so because of which the reaction of this force of friction would act on ground but when we are applying the force of friction it should be very clear to us that on what body the force of friction is acting so we have drawn just right above on the surface on the block if it is acting on the block so this was the note now uh, what we are doing is that let us apply some force f on the block so uh, this is the force which is external force external agent some external agent is applying this force and the force of friction this is f so we know that the block is at rest so it is given to us that the block is at rest so we can conclude that the force which we are applying has to be balanced by the force which is opposing the motion so if we carefully notice what is happening then at first we would be noticing that uh, the block is not moving at all that is there is no relative motion and we would say if friction is absent on this surface uh, if the friction is absent on this surface then would the block move answer is yes the capital of force would move the block it would create relative motion between the contact surfaces So, as there is a tendency of relative motion, if there was no friction present, that means that uh, 
what static friction is doing is that or what the force of friction is doing is that it is preventing the tendency of relative motion that is if friction wasn't present uh, in this particular case then the block would have moved then what friction has done friction has prevented this tendency of relative motion so when this kind of friction force acts which prevents the block block from moving which prevented the tire from moving on that surface which prevented the ice bag on moving uh, on the ground surface then we would say that okay that force of friction is static friction that is what is static friction means so uh, this force of friction f we can write this as fs and this is the static friction so let us draw a graph to understand more about this So on the x axis we have the applied force, the force which we are applying and on the y axis we have the force of friction F or we can say the frictional force. So we are plotting our observations right. So we observed that uh, when the applied force was, was 1 newton let's say in one case you observe that one uh, the applied force was 1 newton then uh, the block was not moving as the block was not moving that means that the applied force is balanced by the force of static friction that means the friction force is 1 newton now we increased the applied force we increased the applied force to 2 newton so the static friction grew to 2 newton and up till a certain point the force and friction they kept balancing each other so it say that up till a certain point this line would be a straight line and not only would this be a straight line this would be a straight line with uh, the slope equal to 1 as x and y are basically equal so up till a certain point we would say that uh, the block is not moving at all no matter how how high applied force is but beyond a certain point motion is definitely going to happen so the point just beyond which the motion between the block and the surface will happen that is the point beyond which relative motion would begin that point is called the point of uh, limiting friction So this is what we call limiting friction. So we can say limiting friction is the maximum value which is the maximum value of the force of friction which can be applied to prevent the motion. That is we can say it is the maximum value of or simply maximum of static friction. So let's say I am representing uh, limiting friction by a value fl. So yeah, uh, the value of limiting friction we know this value is mu s which is coefficient of static friction into normal force. As we learned that force is proportional to, uh, frictional force is proportional to normal force. So the uh, constant of proportionality in that case is called the coefficient of friction. And when the block is not moving, it is just about to move, we say that coefficient is uh, coefficient of static friction. So this is what mu s is. Mu s is coefficient of static friction. And n is normal force. So we say that 
and this is the maximum value uh, which can be applied on the block before uh, before letting it move beyond this point motion would happen so again let us see ke what happened uh, earlier let us take a preview of that case uh, let, uh, let us take a uh, some rewind of that cases so in the previous ideas what we saw is that uh, when the applied force was 1 newton the static friction was 1 newton when the applied force grew to 2 newton the static friction was 2 newton so that means that static friction is taking multiple values and it is equal to the force which we are applying which is actually given by this particular equation so we say that static friction can take a range of values it can be greater than 0 and it can be less than or equal to this coefficient of static friction mu s a into n so these are the values of the static friction which we have that is it would take the value which we are applying on it in simple or in plain terms what we are trying to say is that let's say you have a block uh, kept on the floor let's say that block uh, is like this it is kept on the floor and we know that some force 10 newton is applied on it now it is given to us as that and only this is given and the block is at rest nothing else is given so uh, there is a tendency of motion there is tendency of relative motion between the block surface and the surface of the ground but there is no motion happening so it is a case of static friction uh, now if we are to ask that what is the force applied by the ground that, that is the force of friction what is the force of friction acting on this block so we would straight up say that we will draw the force of friction f and then we will say that force of friction and 10 newton they are basically balancing each other this applied force and force of friction they are balancing each other that's why they are pressed so this is the static friction force so uh, it is given to us that as that the block is at rest and that not nothing more, more is given so this is the only conclusion which we can draw from this particular question um, which means that if the block was experiencing some force let's say 1 newton then we'd say force of static friction is 1 newton so that means static friction is much more a situational force rather than it has some a particular formula right like for limiting friction we have a certain formula right static friction does not have a particular formula it adjusts to the force which we are applying uh, okay so let us extend upon this example to understand it a little more so what we are going to do is that let's say uh, now I increase this force to 15 Newton right now when I increase this force to 15 Newton I observe that the block is still not moving as the block is still not moving we would say that uh, the force of static friction is how much it is going to be 15 Newton and now it is given to us that which is unlike the previous case now it is given to us that now if we go just a little bit more than 15 newton then the motion between the block and the surface starts that is the block starts moving that means we will go beyond this point beyond this critical point that is the limiting friction point we will pass on that point if we increase this applied force beyond 15 newton so 15 newton is the limiting friction right so we would say uh, the maximum value of static friction which can be applied by the surface on the block is 15 newton and this maximum value of static friction is the limiting friction and now we can find the value of mu s or uh, any other value which the question asked for us so this is how static friction works so this is our this was the objective of uh, this video or uh, what we want to, to learn in this video that what is static friction and uh, basically some introduction to the friction so what we learned is that uh, static friction is uh, applied by the ground on the block and also it is applied by the block on the ground as per newton's third law it basically prevents the tendency to the relative motion uh, and why tendency if there was no friction force acting the block would have simply started moving 
तो द फ्रिक्शन फोर्स प्रिवेंट दैट मोशन ऑल टूगेदर तो परफेक्टली प्रिवेंट्स द रिलेटिव मोशन बिटवीन द सर्फेसेस सो इट इज प्रिवेंटिंग द टेंडेंसी ऑफ रिलेटिव मोशन सो दैट इज स्टैंडर्ड फ्रिक्शन इट हैज अ मैक्सिमम वैल्यू ऑफ म्यू एस एन व्हिच इज कॉल्ड लिमिटिंग फ्रिक्शन एंड इट सेल्फ एडजस्ट विद द सिचुएशन प्रेजेंटेड टू अस इन द क्वेश्चन सो Thank you for joining for this particular video. In the next video, we'll be beginning with kinetic friction, and we'll be extending this graph basically and learning more. So, uh, thank you for joining, and have a nice day.